Yep, they don't call this bee balm for nothing. That is beautiful to see. I love it. All right, let's find a good spot to set up over here. Probably the stump ought to do. All right, that yeah, should be good. All right, welcome back for episode two of my new vlog here on Some Room to Grow. Uh, plane overhead. So thanks for all of your feedback on uh, whether or not I should do this. Uh, I've been thinking about it for quite a while. So I'm kind of working on a little bit of a project, expanding the garden, kind of bridging the gap between the food forest over here and the rest of the garden over this way. So I'm just making some new piles of stuff and well, let me just, uh, yeah, let me show you. So I've got these piles here organized all around this tree stump. And no, these are not new compost piles. Uh, not exactly anyway. So what are they? Well, if you remember a little ways back, I made a video about how the city is going to be doing this massive sewer project back here in the easement area. They're going to be tearing all of this stuff out. That means they have to pull the fence out of here and dig this all up, completely replace the sewer. It's gonna be a whole big thing. And that's gonna be starting in uh, a couple of months here, I guess. So there was a whole bunch of stuff growing right at the fence line. Uh, a bunch of just volunteer trees that have come up from other trees in the area, uh, seeds that had been spread there by wildlife. We had like uh, black cherry and white mulberry mostly. And so a lot of those were kind of weaving through the fence and even the, the flesh of the trunks of the trees was growing around the uh, mesh of the fence. So all that stuff was in a bad place. It was all going to be just torn out of there when they start doing this project and they pull all the fence out. So rather than see them just take all of that good organic material and send it off somewhere else, I decided it might be a good idea to just go ahead and cut those things down myself and try to make some good use of all that organic material. So the first thing I did was to cut off a bunch of these branches from the cherry trees, mostly. I guess this is all cherry because that will hold up a lot better. Now these aren't the straightest branches here, but they could definitely be used to tie together to make some natural trellises and things. There's all kinds of good stuff that we could do for with these to uh, support some cucumbers and beans and whatever. So that should hold up quite well. The, uh, the cherry wood is much more resilient than say silver maple wood, which comes off of our gigantic silver maple tree that we've got back here. Uh, pretty much as soon as anything comes off of this tree, it just gets extremely brittle that's not going to be useful for anything. I also have pretty much the entire trunk of a larger cherry tree that I was sad to have to cut this all down but again this was all just going to be taken out anyway and carted off somewhere else so I can definitely make some good use of that. So then I've organized all the rest of the material into these four piles. This is just the smaller branches and leaves and some grass clippings that I threw in here. And so these I would like to turn into some new miniature hugelkultur beds that we can use to plant uh, even more perennials and stuff basically, like I said, to extend the food forest out this way and connect it to where we've got the hugelkultur beds growing. And so I set these up all around the tree stump here, kind of to resemble with the paths between them, looking like the roots coming out from the old tree there. And so I'll just have to dig out some holes and fill that material in and then put the soil back on top and we'll have some new beds. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. It is a very noisy neighborhood today. And uh, well, we'll just have to come back in a few days and see what we've got.
All right, time for a snack. Sweet 100, don't mind if I do. Sun gold, not quite ripe. Still good, what a surprise. And there's so much more on the way. Yes, indeed. All right, time to get back to work. All right, that is all I can do for today. I'm exhausted. So, still got one more to do. This is a slightly bigger one too. We got some rain in the forecast tomorrow, so I'll have to wait till Friday to finish that up. And I'll see you then. Oh, well, I was hoping to have it done by now, but we had a huge storm come through, tons of rain. This soil is just way too wet to be workable still, so I'll just have to leave it like that, I guess. But uh, before I go, just a few thoughts. These beds did take a bit of work and time to set up initially. I think I spent about an hour on each one digging them. Uh, I guess an hour and a half if you include the time of cutting down all the material and chopping that up and organizing piles. So uh, yeah, a little bit of time and effort to begin with, but I will never have to till these or rework the soil again. All of the resources for these came from right here on our property. Didn't have to buy any soil, didn't have to buy any compost or fertilizer amendments. They will be plenty fertile on their own. So that is just a, a real easy way to make something that is going to last for many years. A little bit of work up front, but well worth the effort. So since all of that material was so fresh, I am not going to be planting into these just yet because when that material first starts to decompose, it is using up a lot more nitrogen. So we're going to give these some time to sit for a bit through the fall, over the winter, and then by the spring, we should just be able to put down a fresh layer of compost on top, get some more wood chips all around here and start planting into these and I would like to do more fruits and more berries and nuts really, some shrubs, maybe more uh, dwarf fruit trees in this area. We did plant a Washington hawthorn here. You probably won't be able to see because it is so tiny and as of yet it is not doing anything. This we got from the Arbor Day Foundation when uh, we did a donation and all the other trees have been great. We gave some away to friends and uh, neighbors and coworkers and those have all been good, but this one has not done anything in over a month now being in the soil, so it might be dead. It's possible that it could still be in dormancy. I guess I don't know much about that to be sure, but I do really want to get a tree going here because this would be a great spot to set up something that could become um, more of the upper canopy for the whole food forest area here. That would provide lots of uh, delicious berries for the birds in the area, and it would just be a, a great, uh, great tree to have here. So if that doesn't start doing anything, I may just have to actually buy uh, a tree very soon. I think a hawthorn would be really good choice for that, so we'll see. But anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. And next time, well, I am currently working on a video about the many layers of the food forest. So I would like to at least just do a vlog to come in here and, and show some updates on this. It is uh, quite a mess. So as far as the layers go, we are still missing quite a few. Right now, this is really just a native wildflower and herb garden, which is great. And uh, everything looks amazing, but it's got a long way to go before it officially becomes a food forest. I'm just 
calling it that because that is its intended purpose. So thanks again for watching and I will be back again soon with more.